William Nylander is a big crybaby. Now, Leafs fans waited with bated breath for the decision today, which came in around 4.59 p.m., just one minute before the 5 p.m. deadline. And in the end, he gets a hair less than $7 million at a 6.9 annual average salary. I think that's fair. Forget the final hour. This one came down the final three minutes. How about 4.57 Eastern time? William Nylander signing six years at $6.9 million. Are you surprised that it came that close to the uh, deadline? I am a little bit for both sides. Nylander is coming off consecutive 61-point seasons, but has been at home in Sweden this season, waiting on that this new co contract. After sitting out for 27 games, he finally decided to sign a six-year contract worth about $7 million per year. And after only two years, he's already making the second most amount of money on the entire team. Look at the people he's making more money than on the team. Marlowe, Caudry, Matthews, Marner, Riley, Gardner, and even the goalie Anderson. And even though most people, including Toronto's most beloved Dart guy, think he's at best sixth or seventh best player on the team. Even Don Cherry has a problem with the Leafs caving in on this. They caved in. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he got $7 million for six years. What did he ask for? Right. And he got 20 goals, played 82 games, got 20 goals, and he gave him $7 million. And Martyr's agent's going, hooray, hooray, $7 million, 20 goals. Bob, All right, let's go. What's Bobby Hastings? And if you find yourself saying, Well, Matthews and Marner are still on their entry-level contracts. Well, that's true. But the fact that this new kid is making like $7 million a year, including 10.3 up front, imagine how these other players feel and how much the money they're going to ask for this summer. Maybe they'll get lucky with Gardner, but Matthews and Marner, 10, 12 million? How high is it going to be now? Why else is this a bad deal for the Leafs? Because he's only played two years. Both years, he's only scored 20 goals, 21 on average. You gave that much money to a guy who is unproven, is only going to be about your sixth best player, and he's going to drive up the cost of the rest of your contracts. And if it wasn't enough that this kid had to act like a baby and sit out for a quarter of the season, like he's Le'Veon Bell or Des Bryant, hint, he's not, we have to deal with this PR version of sports virtue signaling. Going home. Give me a break, Nylander. Sidney Crosby never sat out. Ovechkin never sat out. They also led their team in scoring pretty much every year. Oh, isn't that adorable, you guys? What were we supposed to think? Oh, thank you, Nylander. We know you just wanted to get the job done so you could just come home. Except, when I go home, I know that the first thing I think of is to get paid millions upon millions of dollars that I probably don't deserve, and never come home until I get that. Oh, thank you, Nylander. Thank you for your forgiveness. I was really hoping that, as a third liner, you'd sit out for 30 games and then ruin our team's finances for the immediate future. There's only $5.75 million of cap space remaining, so that means goodbye to somebody. Bye-bye, Ron Hainsey. Bye-bye, Leafs defense. Which means, of course, bye-bye, Stanley Cup in the near future. That's okay, though. As Leafs fans, what's another, like, 30, 40, 60 years without a Stanley Cup?